चेतना You know, when I just step in here, there's so much of positive vibes I get. You have free-flowing air, you have natural light, would have all the creativity in it. It would have the innovation that it requires. This cafe, it faces the south direction and it faces, it gets the harshest of light in all seasons. So the idea was to put up viewers or panels that could turn to control the amount of light that comes in. And while we were at it, we thought why not paint it with something bright and interesting so that the kids who are inside also have something to look at and imagine. If not for Mr. Ashok Lal and his young colleagues, uh, I don't think we would have had such a beautiful place where everything has been reused and we can be proud of it. The whole idea to have um, a resilient center for children was about, started about 25 years ago. So we shared this idea with Ms. Ario and we were really, really very um, thankful to them that they appreciated the idea, they recognized the need for it and the necessity, and um, they offered to give us the support to put up the structure if we had the land. And that's how the, this uh, dream has come true after so many years, nearly uh, 20 years of a saga. My concern was that, you know, um, how, would, uh, how would Miserio find this place, you know. And um, I'm so happy that all of them really, really were very appreciative of the way this, this building was put up and very appreciative of Mr. Ashok Lal that he conceived it in this manner. The other is for me was the, how would the children react to this place? How would my colleagues react to this place? Because it's so very important that you should own it. If you don't own it, you don't feel happy, then, then we have lost it. So when I got my colleagues to come in, they were completely, completely bowled over and they said, you know what, I think uh, you would find that there will be a remarkable change in our effectiveness in working. We would be, we, our uh, in output would be much more here. We would be far more creative. And as I said about the children, they just loved it. They thought it was a maze. They can play hide and seek here. But more than that, they felt that this was a place that gave them so much of warmth and a sense of feeling safe and welcomed. <laughs> I've been involved in the making of this building since uh, the initial planning stages and today I think I'm, we're quite happy with what we've able to achieve in this. This is called the donor's tree. Um, butterflies wanted to uh, set up a, uh, an, a tree shaped installation that would incorporate the names of all the donors who have donated to them. Instead of going with a very conventional form, we thought that we'd give it a slightly free-flowing form and where all the leaves would be shaped differently. That is also to express the idea that every child is different. He, has, he or she has their own personality. So no two leaves should be the same. So a lot of uh, varied functions have been incorporated into this building. So this building has a very uh, uh, public set of functions. It has very private uh, functions as well, which are residential in nature, and there are some semi-public functions. So for example, it, uh, the building has a cafe, which is open to all kinds of outsiders, which this uh, we would call the public function. It has semi-public uh, functions, which are the office spaces, and there is a school that offers culinary training. Uh, so that we would consider semi-public because entry is controlled for these uh, spaces and apart from this it has, the rest of the building is all private in nature because it's all residential uh, for young boys who are given a temporary home here.
Yeah, you know, I am from a, you know, farmer, a farmer's family. And uh, farming is in my blood. It's a jacaranda tree. Yeah, it's a very beautiful, delicate uh, leaves. And it gives a very good uh, purple flowers, no? The children love it. Actually, my main uh, responsibility is in finance and administration. But uh, I love plant, uh, you know, gardening. Actually, we want to teach kids you know, to love. Give them a live example. See how to love plants. How to love nature. That's all. And even uh, our staff also. Once they eat this vegetable uh, plug out from the garden, they get a, a curry, they make curry and they eat, you know, they feel happy. <laughs> See, this is my own effort, you know. That's what we want to teach. Here also, a uh, lot of space. Actually, this terrace, you know, we, we are planning whole, uh, utilizing this terrace space to grow vegetables. We will have uh, different boxes here and we will have uh, vegetables and herbs here. This will be a natural and uh, very good vegetables we can produce it. Pure organic vegetables. As the villages around the cities get more and more dense and all the open spaces get occupied by more and more buildings and now it's buildings and small lanes, you've lost the ground or you're losing the ground. Well, how do you build in such a place? One of the ways is to think of the rooftop as becoming the new ground. Make use of the roof as much as you can. So on the rooftop, as you might see, we can catch the sun to heat water. There's a solar hot water system. We can catch the sun to make electricity. Almost 50% of the electricity consumed in the entire building can be generated from these solar panels. And then when you have a long, narrow building, it actually is three buildings served by a lane that connects the front to the rear. And as it goes along, it has two courtyards in the middle. So the front court, the rear court, and the two middle courts with the lane provide, so to speak, a structure for getting access to all parts of the building, getting light to all parts of the building, getting ventilation to all parts of the building. And yet, it's a very dense development. तब देख सकते हैं ये ईट ये पूरी सेम है सिमिलर उसकी तरह जो नॉर्मल हमारी ब्रिक ब्रिक होती है जैसे नीचे लगी हुई है उसकी तरह तो यही बनाई इसका भी प्रोसेस होता है मैम कुछ कि मिट्टी को पहले छाना जाता है फिर उसके अंदर सैंड मिलाई जाती है सीमेंट मिलाया जाता है देन उसको फिर हम चट्टा लगाते हैं उसका और फिर उसकी क्यूरिंग करते हैं तो फिर उसको हम इस्तेमाल करते हैं देन तो हमने हाइड्रोलिक मशीन का इस्तेमाल करा और उससे जो है थ्री पर डे की हमने निकालनी चालू करी ब्रिक्स बबल डेक्स लैब दिल्ली में तो पहली बिल्डिंग है जिसमें बबल डेक का इस्तेमाल हुआ है और ये बहुत बेस्ट आइडिया था स्लैब के में हमने जब बॉल्स डाली तो उस बॉल्स को डालने से हमने एक तो कंक्रीट की सेविंग करी और स्ट्रक्चर का वेट हमने लाइट कर दिया Uh, one of the things that we have to see is where the material comes from for the construction of the building. And as the city and the village regenerates, you find that you can get a lot of second-hand doors and windows. And we were very lucky, we found some very beautiful doors and windows, which could be fitted to different kinds of purposes and uses in all the parts of the building. <laughs> Another great thing was, to excavate a basement, make that a usable space, the earth that comes out from the basement, you can convert into cement-stabilized blocks, 
and they can be used into the walls. But the big thing was actually making earth blocks out of the earth of the basement itself. And 70% of all brickwork here is from the earth of the basement. Now what could be more sustainable than that? I recall my own childhood living in a big, rambling old house. And it was such fun going up and down, in and out, in so many different ways around the house. So I really thought that a place for children has to be a place that they can explore and they can find their own corners in it, from the ground, from the inside, to the courtyards, even to the rooftop. And not just that, you should be able to climb up from the rooftop onto a perch and look out into the horizon. That's what makes it fun for children. Very light, very airy, and colorful. 